week we're doing the bromination of stilbene. I'm going to first explain to you what an electrophilic addition is. So the pi bonds on an alkene are going to attack an electrophile, producing a carbocation, which is then attacked by a nucleophile, ending in a distributed alkene. So we're using this mechanism in our bromination of stilbene. So stilbene is an alkene. It's going to interact with BR2 in a solvent to produce an anti-addition uh, of um, Bromine. Bromine, sorry, I just think. Um, and so this bromine is actually extremely hazardous. It's carcinogenic, it produces vapors, it, it's just very unstable. So we're going to be using safe reagents in this lab. The safe reagents being per peridinium tribromide. And our solvent's going to be glacial acetic acid. Peridinium tribromide will interact with BR3 and it'll produce a BR2, which will be used in, in the reaction itself. From your bromination of stilbene, you can get one of two products. You can either get a trans product or a cis product. Um, the trans product is more thermodynamically stable, and you can determine whether you have this trans product rather than the cis product by looking at the melting point. So the melting point of the trans product is 238 degrees Celsius, which is a lot higher than the melting point of cis of the cis product which is 110 degrees Celsius. This is because, like I said, this one is more like, er, thermodynamically stable, and so it takes a lot more heat or energy to break it down and boil. Um, so, yeah, um, the cis has a lower one because it's less thermodynamically stable. So the IUPAC name for the Romanian still being is 1,2-dibromo-1,2-diphenylethane, um, or commonly known as a vicinal dibromo product. So this is the glassware we'll be using in the bromination of stilbene lab. So you should have a 50 mil round bottom flask, 150 mil beaker, which is a 250 mil vacuum filtration flask, a Buchner funnel for your vacuum filtration, 50 mil graduated cylinder, a condenser, spatula, a blue clip for attaching the round bottom flash to the condenser, an amber bulb, test tube, and the hose for the water. These are the chemicals we will be using for our brumination. These are our reagents. This is the steel beam. This is pyridium tribromide, which is a stable form of bromine. These are our solvents, 95% ethanol, acetic acid, and this is our silver nitrate solution, 1%, that we will be using. So this is ethanolic in ethanol, ethanolic uh, solution of silver nitrate. Okay. So we use this for uh, halide test, right? Great. So let's set up the reaction now. Okay. Now we're going to weigh out our chemicals. So we're going to first start out by weighing the unknown steel bean. So we're going to grab our unknown steel bean spatula. We're going to get one gram. We're going to tee it out. Heavy sand look like. It is. It's not gonna just drop. White. Solid. So this is. We have 1.064 gram. Just note down. Okay. Now we're going to weigh out our chemicals. So we're going to first start out by weighing the unknown steel bean. So we're going to grab our unknown steel bean spatula. We're going to get one gram. I'm going to tee it out.
heavy sand look like? It is. It's not gonna just drop. White. Solid. So this is so we have one point zero six four gram. Just note down. Next we're gonna weigh out our cardinium tripromide. Gonna get my weight boat. Put on the scale. I'm gonna zero it out. I'm gonna get my correct spatula. This was red. Red solid. I'm getting two grams. Here we note down, this will mean 1.064 and cadmium carbonate 2 gram. So first we're going to pour in our 1.064 grams of stilbene into our round bottom flask. reflexing. 
so here you can see after 12 minutes this uh, stick acid solution started boiling and stick acid have boiling point around 118 degree celsius so we'll boil for uh, 15 minutes and right now heating knob is around 6 so we'll keep it as such we'll come back after 15 minutes so this is a uh, here after 15 minute refluxing we wait for 12 minutes and 15 minutes for refluxing now 27 minutes so here you can see still some solid is there so probably we need uh, to increase a little bit more heat so that we can dissolve this one and maybe 5 minutes more so while you're waiting for your reflux um, you can go ahead and set up your ice bath for you to cool down 25 milliliters of water so we just have our ice in here a uh, 150 milliliter beaker we can just go ahead and put our water in there and let it get nice and cold while we wait this is a 25 ml water. So our solution is almost done refluxing. You have to make sure that everything has been dissolved before taking it off the heat. For heating, I would probably have it up around 8. It needs a high heat to reflux. And when you are done, make sure you wait before opening it and taking apart the apparatus. Wait for it to cool completely to room temperature. Can you stop the heating? And here you can see everything is dissolved. Only few chunks remain, that's okay. And you're gonna take your water that's in the ice bath and just add it in. Um, as you can see, we still have some solid and ideally you wouldn't have any. We just ran into some issues today. Scrape it in. And we're gonna rinse with DI water to get all of the remaining. Small amount of water? Yeah, small amount of water to get all of the remaining um, solution out. Pour it into our little cup. There you go. And we have to wait 10 minutes and mm -hmm. then filter it. Yeah. Make sure you burrow with the ice. Make right. sure it's cold. Now we're about to set up our vacuum filtration. So we have our vacuum funnel here. We're going to attach the hose securely. We have our Butchner funnel. We're going to get our filter paper, we're going to place that inside, and next we're going to add some water to fully cover the bottom. Ready for filtration? Okay. Okay, so now that our product has cooled down, it's time to filter it in the vacuum filtration. So we're going to get our product. We're going to slowly pour it. We're going to allow it to go down. Pour some more. We don't want to add it too fast so that the product isn't all along the sides.
white it's like a card your <laughs> now we're going to rinse it with water so i'm going to get the rest of this out of this beaker it's about 20 milliliters of water And now we're going to allow this to air dry for 15 minutes. 15 minutes for air dry. Okay, we'll come back after 15 minutes. Our 15 minutes is up, so now we're going to stop our vacuum filtration. We're going to remove the hose. We're going to get our product, we're going to use our spatula, we're going to scrape around the edges and lift up the filter paper. Try to get all of our products. And we'll then we'll oven dry. Now we're going to oven dry our product. It's for 10 minutes. And we'll come back in 10 minutes. Be sure to remove your boiling stones from your solid before weighing it out. Next, get your weight boat. Place it on a scale. Be sure to zero it out. And now you're going to get your paper only and place it on the weight book. So now we're gonna take the melting analysis. You're gonna to have to use a capillary for this. So a capillary has a closed end and then it has a opened end. The opened end is where you're gonna do the packing. So you have your dry product and you kind of just push down on it and try to get as much product as you can. I'm going to wipe off the excess on the edges. So you have some product here. You have to get it to the bottom. So to get it to the bottom, you have to use this tube here. The top portion is going to face upwards and all you do is you drop it. And that will force it down to the bottom. Great. Whenever you've gotten enough packed, you're going to come over here to the heating melt station and you're just going to slip it in to one of the pockets and then you'll just increase the temperature until it melts. You want to make note of the temperature where your product starts to glisten or sparkle and then you want to write down the temperature at which it actually melts so you can get a heating and, or a temperature range of your product. So for this product, we did get already a temperature of 236.5 degrees Celsius. So that indicates that this was a trans still beam. That means that we were able to get the correct um, anti-addition on our still beam. Okay, so here you can see we got this uh, brominated product from the still beam. But how we will confirm that we got exactly bromine? So this is a common test we use for halide ions which is called the silver nitrate test so in this case what happened basically if you take the potassium chloride which is white solid potassium bromide white solid potassium iodide white solid you will dissolve in water it will give a aqueous solution and they are all transparent but when you treat with the acidic silver nitrate it gave a white precipitate in silver chloride with a slightly cream color solution with this silver nitrate and bromide so basically we got silver bromide and then silver iodide gave pale yellow color so we are going to run our uh, test 
with this uh, here this product which is a dye bromo product from the ethyl bean will treat with the silver nitrate ethanolic solution in presence of ethanol and will observe what color we are going to get it so basically we will theoretically we should give a get a silver bromide nitric acid and then this dye ethoxy product so let's run the uh, silver nitrate silver nitrate test <coughs> 